Hello everyone, I hope you're having the most awesome day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to cover even more of the worst bars to be featured on Bar Rescue and reveal how they're doing now. So sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. Joe's Thirsty Lizard Bar and Grill For a season 6 episode, John Tapper heads over to Horn Lake, Mississippi to rescue Joe's Thirsty Lizard Bar and Grill from closure. Owned by Joe Scott, he's been running the bar since 2015 and has been occupying the place rent free but without a liquor license. Oddly, he decided to make Mike the dishwasher the bar's manager despite the fact that he doesn't have any prior experience. Barely making any profit, Scott doesn't have the money to make the necessary repairs, replace equipment, or get rid of vermin. Not knowing how else to move forward, the owner decided to call out to Taffer and his team for some much needed help. When the famous rescuer arrives with his experts, they point out that the place looks like it's abandoned. Observing things through CCTV cameras, Taffer and his team watches the cook Dirty Red and mismanages the kitchen with a bad attitude. They also notice that the staff is smoking indoors while working since it's permitted in the bar which is very unsanitary. Sending in some locals as recon, they immediately stick out to the bar's patrons since they aren't regulars. After ordering some beers that were flat, the spies try to get some food but are appalled with the service quality. Not only is the cook rude and smokes before preparing their food, he cross-contaminates the dishes that he's making which prompts Taffer to rush inside. Confronting the negligent owner and manager about how filthy their bar is, Taffer reprimands Dirty Red who isn't apologetic about the kitchen state. He claims that he's way too busy to clean up, but the bar rescue host forces him to scrub the whole kitchen if he wants the bar to be rescued. Leaving and returning the following day, Taffer is shocked to find out that Dirty Red was showering himself in the kitchen. Following some training with the staff which involved refining some of the items on the menu and making better cocktails, Taffer was ready to launch a stress test. In essence, the service was awful since the kitchen was overwhelmed with orders and wasn't able to keep up and many customers received drinks without paying. More importantly, the test highlighted that Mike wasn't cut out to be a manager, so Scott decided to demote him later on into the episode. Once everything was settled, Taffer moved into the renovation phase starting by changing the name to the Iron Horse. On top of redoing the outside by giving it a bright sign, the interior was improved with new equipment and dimmable lights. Upon the bar's eventual relaunch, the bartender seemed to be working more efficiently and Dirty Red was sending out food that was well received by customers at a steady pace. Weeks after the taping of this episode, the bar's sales were up by $10,000 which is a great improvement. Ultimately though, the Iron Horse closed down in October of 2019 after the owner decided to sell it. Back in February of 2020, a bar called the Lazy Lizard opened in its place but this allegedly closed down since the building was condemned by the city. The Dugout John Taffer pays a visit to the dugout located in Chicago, Illinois in a season 5 episode to bring it back on its feet. Owned by Ed Cressy, who's the landlord of the building, he took control of the business after the previous owners failed to pay rent. Considering the fact that he was never planning to own a bar, which is a grueling business to be in, he often drinks on the job to cope. Since the bar is $30,000 in debt and losing close to $5,000 a month, Cressy tried to offer promotions and marketed the bar in any way possible, but nothing worked. Really having no options left, the owner decided to call out to Taffer for some professional guidance. Reconning the bar with expert mixologist Phil Wills and chef Ryan Scott, they noticed that the area has a lot of foot traffic but that the dugout barely stands out. Hoping to get an idea of the customer experience, Taffer sends in a sports writer and his friend to test the waters. After ordering a Long Island iced tea and a shandy, the spies try to order a burger but they're told that they're only available on game days. Instead, they ask to get some mac and cheese and a ranch salad and wait patiently as the kitchen staff engage in unsanitary cooking practices. Not only are they cross-contaminating without a care in the world, but there are flies buzzing around the kitchen which is nasty. Having seen more than enough, Taffer rushes inside to stop the food service and immediately inspects the bar. Chef Scott shows Cressy the grease and food buildup on the fryer but he doesn't seem to care whatsoever. Expert mixologist Wills tries to get the bartender to make a Long Island fishbowl but it tastes awful and he admits that he's never been trained or given a recipe which is the same for the other bartenders. Unimpressed with the bar's state, Taffer gets Ryan to throw out all the food they have stored in the kitchen and then leaves for the day. Aside from being passive and unapologetic about the situation, Cressy rudely flips Taffer off as he heads out. Returning the next day, the famous rescuer holds a staff meeting and the owner highlights that he never wanted to run a business in the first place but was forced to. After hearing complaints about how dismissive Cressy is to his staff and their ideas, Taffer started to wonder if he really wanted to rescue the bar. Deciding to give the dugout a chance, he first put the staff through some training and would decide if he wanted to help the place or not after the stress test. Once the bar's team was up to speed with the basics of mixing and cooking, Taffer was finally ready to see their skills in action. As the orders flooded in, Mike, Cressy's nephew who works as a part-time cook, tried his best to fulfill orders. Since no one was delivering the food to the patrons, the owner was forced to take on the role of food runner but didn't know where any of it was going which made things really confusing. While the bartenders were doing great, Cressy seemed completely clueless as to what was going on so Taffer was forced to shut things down. 
Following the service, the owner gets into an argument with the staff, which results in a bartender leaving, and Cressy announces that he's done with the place and just leaves. Making the difficult decision to honor his commitment of rescuing the bar, Taffer starts by changing the place's name to the press box and remodels the exterior as well as the interior. Not inviting the awful owner to the relaunch, he showed up to the unveiling anyway, drunk as can be, and cursed Taffer out despite all that he's done for him. As a result, most of the staff decided to quit since they realized the bar had no future with Cressy at its head. Post Bar Rescue, it seems like the place is still open to this day, which is honestly the most surprising thing ever. The bar's reviews are very polarizing with some praising the drinks and staff, while others think the place is a complete nightmare. They might not be too far off though since the place was being investigated by the city for breaking state reopening guidelines and refusing to enforce social distancing. Pirates Tavern As our final entry, we're going to cover a bar that John Taffer attempted to rescue called Pirates Tavern. After hosting a successful pirate-themed party, Tracy Rebella decided that it'd be a good idea to bring this concept into a bar setting, giving birth to Pirate's Tavern. Employing people who took the pirate thing very seriously, they unfortunately fit the role too perfectly since they always drink on the job and scare patrons away. Aside from having no experience in the industry, Tracy hired her husband, Giussiano, who has no background in cooking, to work in the kitchen. Considering that the bar's clientele was on a decline and that their debts were skyrocketing, Tracy called out to Taffer for some aid. Arriving at the bar with his wife Nicole, she enters alone as a spy and immediately notices that the female staff are wearing revealing clothing. Oddly, the staff seemed to be really nice to her, but it became clear that they were only acting that way because they knew who she was. Since this didn't work, Taffer sent in the owners of a bar from a previous episode wearing pirates clothing who were practically ignored. Once they got the chance to actually order something, what they received was nothing less than awful. Heading into the building to meet with the owner, she reveals that it's always been a dream to own a bar, but that she's having difficulty making money. Pointing out that it might be because they serve terrible food and drinks, Giussiano blames the customers for not liking his food since he thinks it's good, which angers Taffer deeply. Holding a staff meeting later on, the famous rescuer admits that the bar has a lot to work on, but brings in his experts for some help. Coming back the following day, Taffer made it clear that the buccaneer theme had to go if the bar wanted to see another day. Getting the staff to return into their normal clothing, the bar rescue host got his experts to train the staff properly. Later on, after the staff was at least a bit more competent, Taffer attempted to run a stress test, which was pretty chaotic. Not only was the staff completely overwhelmed with the orders, but Juciano left mid-service, which forced Jason to take control of the kitchen. In the end though, they managed to come out on top and impress the new patrons who were in love with the food and drinks. Fast forward to after Taffer was done renovating the place, the owners decided to revert everything that was done and even went as far as to burn some of the things the bar rescue team gave them, which was posted on YouTube. Eventually, the place closed down for good, and deservingly so, since they just didn't want to change anything. Moving to Florida a year after this happened, the Rebellas decided to open up a bar called Bar Refuge, and upon meeting with Taffer for the revisit, the three put the past behind them. Well, that'll sadly be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this, and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.